Absolutely. Right? There's always going to be uh, extenuating circumstances to things. You always need to take things into consideration. And um, one thing before that you mentioned uh, that we need to use uh, definitions of pre-existing sort of uh, uh, pre-existing definitions that have been discussed in literature. I actually agree with you. I think that economic rigor, uh, the the sort of uh, academic rigor in any debate or discussion is extremely useful. However, it's also extremely limiting. If you want to further an idea based exclusively on previous work without any introduction, you know, you're just you're trying to make a hybrid that is like almost impossible. This kind of mirror of an idea. You know, your your point there is well taken. I accept that point. In fact, Ibn Taymiyyah, who has one of the scholars of Islam, he wrote a book called Ar-Radd al mantaqiyin in the beginning, which means the response to the logicians. He said the first thing is you'll never find a definition which is all encompassing. Yep. This is always there a problem. Yeah. So he says that. But what you have to do, I mean, people of their own specialism know, like m uh, medical doctors know what they mean when they say X or Y or Z. They know what it is. You don't have to stress it too much. Generally you, accepted. Yeah, but the, 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 an all-encompassing definition doesn't exist in the real world. Is what his point is. Like, what does he suggest? What is he, what's his solution? He's saying that. Well, to be honest with you, he, he seems to suggest that let's go back to what the people of that particular specialism say. For example, doctors, when they, if we had this discussion, if it became too abstract, doctors wouldn't be able to do their work. Yeah, so he says that let them kind of come to an agreement on what things mean, peer review, and let that work, let that process work itself. It's never, and, he, and he admits it's never going to be a perfect system. But isn't that what happens here now today? It is. Yeah. It's, a, it's the academic process. Yeah. But, but also in medicine as well. Yes. But also in yes. And, yes. You know, they, they'll decide what, what you know, like... What, let's what should we define? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, You're right. life end and stuff. Absolutely. So here's what I'll say to you, though. Here's, here's the biggest, one, one of the biggest problems of liberalism. One of the, one of the things that is um, assumed is that you're living, this is Nozick's argument, he says look, he says, he doesn't believe in a social contract by the way, he's one of the non-contractarian liberals, non-contractual slash contractarian liberals. He says this, he says that it, originally you have perfect freedom, okay? And then what happens is the state takes more and more of your rights away yes. through taxation, through uh, manipulation, through punishment, and so on and so yep. forth. And so what he proposes is something called a minimal state. Nozick starts with an assumption. Right. He says, look, he actually has a passage in his book that he says that if you have these people who want to get married, yep. and these people want to get married, right. let's say, for example, you, you and you want to get married, and they are free, let's say you want to get married to women, yeah? And there's three other guys that want to also get married to women. Now these four, three other guys want to get married. I'm sure he's smiling. No, no, he's married already. <laughs> he's saying, I'm not going to get involved. I'm not going to make this. This, I know he does. These guys want to get married, all right? Now, if these guys get married to the woman that you would have otherwise married, is that limiting of your option or not? Well, it's up to her then, isn't it? Not? No, 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 I'm not no, saying... If you're asking if that's I'm the not, limitation of my... Yes. yes, but that's a natural limitation. Yeah, that's what he says as well. But he says that's an acceptable limitation. No, no, yeah, now, yeah, yeah. So, if, look, let me say this one more time. You three want to get married, there are three girls to, uh, to best and uh, legal, just because I say girls, people will have, have the wrong idea, that want to get married. Now these three men get married to those three girls that you want to get married to, right? right. If that happens, then your, limit, your freedom is limited. Sure. You see here the problem is this, if you don't have a government and you don't have an imposition from a sovereign, yes, yeah, that is taking your freedom away. When, when, when I go to the end of the month and I get my paycheck and there's money taken out from taxes, that's taking my freedom away, right? But at the same time, if you had a chaotic, chaotic or anarchic state, that would be uh, freedom limiting as well because... There would be no marriages, is that what you're saying? No, no, no. No, I'm saying there will be marriages, but everyone's freedom is still um, limited by other people. So you have a choice. Your freedom can either be limited by other people or the government. And all the government. Yeah, it can be mediated so, or, 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 yeah, or anarchic. Right, so what we're saying is, if we agree that the the freedom can and ought to be limited, uh, it's, it's justifiable, even from a utility perspective. Justifiably limited. Justifiably limited by the government. Now the question is to what extent? So, sure, always but, a question. Now, right. So if you say, look, it should be to a minimal extent, where it's closest to that original state, then what will happen is, like, for example, if we don't have a death penalty for a murderer, yeah? If, if, let's be honest. If, if you have death penalty for murder, there will be less murders. Not necessarily. No, no. Now, let me explain. Theoretically, you'd assume it's a deterrent, there will be less murders. Let's just say for the sake of argument, if, if all things stay the same. However, if there's no death penalty, there'll be more murders in a sense. Because if, if you cared about human life, you've got two choices. Either we kill these guys 
who are the perpetrators or will allow these deaths to happen, which are which well, will be done. You imprison them and you've solved the problem without killing people. Right, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yes, that, that can be something as well. Yes. Yeah, like, so punishment yes, from the state. Punishment. Yes. Imagine if there, if there was no jails. Forget, okay, forget about the death penalty thing. True. If there's no jails, right? True. If there was no jails, everyone will do whatever they want. True. Especially here in Speaker's no. Corner. Again, no. Well, a lot of people will do whatever they want. If there was no fear of consequence, right? Look, uh, we had... Maybe you're a good man, but no, no, look, me, look, I would do had, lots of bad we, things. We had, we had tribal yes. relations and we had uh, inter-tribe inter trade, we had inter-tribe war as well. We had social systems way before we had laws, way before we had institutions. I'm not saying institutions are bad, I'm not saying they don't work and they don't increase the utility and well-being of humans, or just creatures in general, right? But to assume that without a monarch or a, a sovereign, sovereign. sovereign, yes, uh, you would have absolute anarchy. It's just there's no precedent for this. Yes, there's a precedent for an increase of it, and yes, there is a, a precedent for yeah. uh, increase in volatility and sort of just return to basis instincts. But the the, the, the the imposition that you don't have court social order without law or without a sovereign is just no, no, not but empirically what, okay, based I think at all. There's a bit of an equivocation here. Okay, please. The fallacy of equivocation. Yes, if there is, right. please point it out. Let me explain. When I say anarchy, I'm not using the term vernacularly. Okay. I'm not saying like, oh, it's chaos, like that. No, you mean like a social system. I'm talking about an ideology which is distinct from liberalism. Sure, sure. And which has its own principles or lack thereof. Absolutely. Which yes. is defined primarily as a lack of government. Yes. So anarchy cannot work. In uh, where there's a government, if there's a government and a sovereign, there's no anarchy. There's no, yeah, it's right. not, it's not so, anarchy. So, so the point is this: I'm saying that the anarchic system, in and of itself, is it would you would assume that it would allow for more crime to take place because there's a lack of consequence, a fear of consequence. Not necessarily. You're saying not necessarily, but that's what because, the assumption because is. Because even if, no, listen. Because uh, even even if you don't have, it's not necessary. So, you're right. It's not. It's not logically necessary. And it, it's not all. No, it's, all, it's not only yeah. Uh, yeah. that, but it yeah. also we have examples. Yeah, of societies that have functions with. Yeah, that function without uh, without uh, government or without the rule of law. That have social structure that is not what you would call, you know, mayhem or, or like, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah, right? It, it, like, yes, there's an increased proclivity because law by nature is a deterrent, right? It, it is, in fact, a limiting factor that is that is designed to increase utility. Design, not all, doesn't always work. But the imposition that without the rule of law or a sovereign, you return to a uh, not anarchical but just the no, murderous no. state is, is, not, is no, not imperative. Let me, make, let me make this clear, right? like, just in a normal sense. You all went to school, right? You, you, maybe you are still in school, right? I don't know. So let's say you're in a school and you're a teacher, and I was a teacher for some time. True. And there were no rules in the classroom. True. Now, what do you assume will happen in the... I mean, just use your uh, brain. Do you think that the kids will be more behaved or less behaved? Right. Now, let's use that example with society. If there was no punishments in society, there's no, there's no prison, prisons don't exist. Do you think that the, the crime will increase or decrease? Look, man, you, 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 can't really, uh, you can't really use uh, an example of children, like someone who is literally at a minimum level of, of, of like capacity and awareness and experience in life, and then say, but what about society no, no. at large? Like, okay, okay, fine. Yeah, you, you don't know like the I mean. example. Yeah. Let's, let's use another example. Sure, please. A pub. Uh, you know, uh, you know, a you, pub, yes. Yeah. I don't know if you go to... Oh, yeah. Uh, you do, yeah? <laughs> you don't look, you look quite... You have a high level of sobriety in this conversation, so I didn't assume that. <laughs> I, I, I tend to think that it like it stimulates my. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, no, it definitely doesn't. There's no evidence of that. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. Don't take <laughs> right. that yet. So ha ha here's what I'm saying. If you go to and if there was no rules. Right. Look, we, we know how the deal. Sure, sure. You know, in in Arabic, we have a nice um, poetic saying. Yeah. yeah. Man amina la asa al adab. Whoever fears the consequences will get rude to you. Right. Yeah. Hobbes said, "Man is uh, covenants are but words if they're not backed by swords." You know, if there's no uh, fear of consequence, everything can go, everything can happen. Not necessarily. And let me tell you something. If we're talking about sovereign consequences. Sure. If there's, uh, if there's no sovereign consequence, you know what will happen? There will be some kind of... Co you know who... Basically, let's be honest. If there's no sovereign... You, you mentioned it yourself, tribal systems, right? Tribal systems are... Basically, they become a pseudo-government. Tri Over time. Yeah, right. So they become like... They're in charge now. They're, they're basically, the head of the tribe becomes like a parliamentarian. The guy with the biggest gun will have the last say. That's what will happen. 
Not, not, look, uh, uh, whilst I absolutely agree that this is the sort of you don't, you don't agree with this? No, 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 no. Listen, I absolutely agree. This yeah. is the sort of uh, moral progression. Or I wouldn't call it moral. That's a really wrong term. Uh, it's, it's a judicial progression, yeah, right? Like, it usually goes to tense towards this. However, this is not a necessary state because we do actually have examples of... Uh, like what? Sorry. So, for instance, if you go to the Amazon, the Amazon doesn't, uh, Amazon tribes don't always have a, a uh, village elder. They have a village they elder do, they just do. because he's the oldest, but he's not a leader. He's just an advising figure. Oh, well, look, I can't tell you that I'm an expert on the Amazon rainforest. Neither am I. No, I'm just <laughs> I, know, hands. I know some of my friends actually went but, to the Amazon yeah. rainforest. When I went to certain places in Africa where they have tribal leaders, right. they're seen as the main men there, man. You, so you know, they've got it. They're the main, seen as the main men, like, okay, yeah. usually it's men. You know, and except in very few circumstances. And they're the ones who call the shots. They're basically like parliamentary. You don't want to get rude to them, basically. Right. Look, let me tell you something. If you go to certain areas in London or New York or wherever these places, the police have less say than the gangsters. Oh, yeah, I agree. I mean, you. everyone knows this, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah but but what, why? Course. What's the gangster got that the police doesn't? He's got, he, he's got secrets, people's secrets. He's got influence and he's got guns and knives. I mean, if you take, if you strip the gangsters away from that, they'll have uh, no power anymore. Uh, I mean, that's why the church used to have more power than the government. Exactly. Yeah, the, the point I'm making is that, you know, it all boils down to this, like at the end of the day. So when we talk about liberalism, the idea is, okay, look, you're saying freedom of speech. I'm saying to what extent freedom of speech, right? So am I. Yeah. Now you're saying freedom of speech to this extent. I'm saying, why did you pinpoint it at this level? Where really, the sovereign could have point, pinpointed it at that level. Look, they could justifiably be a law in this country as there was in 13... 81, right, of a treason law, and until 1988, I mean, it stayed on the statute books, by the way, in the statute books, mm -hmm. as far as I know, there was a treason law in this country that said that yes. someone could be killed for treason until 1988, even after yes. the time where the death penalty was... 1999, actually. Really? Yeah, yeah, 1999. And, and look, yeah. that doesn't justify... When was justify. the last case of that? When was the last case of that? Uh, about 1968. Yeah, but that doesn't justify it. No, no, I'm not saying it... Ju well, look, hold on. I say it does justify it. Okay, Here's right. my point. I'm saying that that law, that treason law that they had in place was fully constitutionally justified and philosophically justified. There's no problem with the treason law. And in fact, this is my, my belief after looking at the data. I believe that when America and England have proper treason laws, because you know what's happened now? Let me tell you what's happened in this country, right? The treason law has pretty much changed to the counter-terrorism law. I mean, all the, 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 you know, the persecutions of counter-terrorism is pretty much what would have been included in the treason law, right? In America, it's, ch it's changed to only extradition. For internal only for internal terror. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, in America, it's changed to extrajudicial killings. My, my view is that if society is clear, if Americans, if the American government is clear of us, and the British government is clear of us, they say, look, if you do this, you will, we will kill you. Right. Look, just be honest with us. We, we understand that there may be a need for that death. Just be honest. It's in self defense. No, no, no. If they say, and it, that thing that that person could be doing may not be military. Sure. They could do thing X, right? Sure. Because the thing is, what the Americans and the British are doing at the moment, more so the Americans, mm -hmm. is that they've gotten rid of the treason. America is still in, in the Constitution, Article 2. But for, for the most part, they've gotten rid of the treason law. In this country, they've gotten rid of the treason law. And what you have instead is extrajudicial killings. You have them doing things outside of... Uh, Black the, ops. Yeah, all them kind of nonsense things. So I'm like, why don't you just tell us, as not only just the Muslim community or everyone else, just say, look, if you do this, you might die. We might actually put you in a room and shoot you to death. Sure. And I'm okay. not justifying and, and, and I'm saying I to you... I don't think that's good. No, no, I think they should. Do you, know why I say, do you know why I say they should say that to us in, in a direct way? I say that... Yeah, it's not happening it's in America. They say if you do these things, we'll kill you. No, no, I'm not saying that. Look, I mean, these are just certain things. No, he's not saying what I'm saying. He's saying no, no, what's going I'm, on. I'm saying that. Look, look. It, studies have shown that there have been thousands of extrajudicial killings. Well, let me explain yes. what it shows. In America, they bring some guy like Abdul Rahman Al Awlaki, who's the son of, he's a kid, oh, yeah, yeah, and I'm they, familiar with these they shoot him, yeah. right, with a drone or something. Okay, that's unjustifiable to a kid. He's got nothing to do with anything. But let's say, for example, there's other cases like it. They bring some guy and they kill him. Why? Because they say, you're doing things that are going to lead to our, a jeopardizing of our security. There's a breach of social contract here. There's a, you're, 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 you're breaching the allegiance. But because they want to maintain the false fake narrative that, look, we allow freedom of speech and expression, they'll make it as if these things are just happening on the side. But if they were open and honest about it and say, look, 
wait. Look, if they said, if they said, look, wait. we will kill you if you do this. What that does is those guys that are killed extrajudicially, let me explain. Those guys that are being killed extrajudicially, right? Which are thousands of people being killed extrajudicially. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those guys that are being killed extrajudicially, at least they'll be given a trial. At least, okay, there's two things they'll be given, a warning and a trial. Sure, but you're defending freedom of speech right there. No, that's not freedom of speech. That's a different thing altogether. No, but look, look, look. That's, you, that's these are called habeas corpus rights. Sure, but right. look. So what I'm saying is that the Americans decide to take away habeas corpus rights at certain times. What I'm saying is, instead of doing that, why don't you just be honest with us and say, look, if you do these things, we're going to kill you. They, they, are, they argue that they do it outside of America where the law doesn't apply. That's why well, they... I mean, that's a bullshit excuse. Yeah, yeah. Still, no, I'm not justifying they're 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 it. Of course, still do it. And yeah. it's not just... And like, even, even in but your example... That, that yeah. doesn't infringe the American law. Their, you're, their, you're their giving, ideas look, is... Look, yeah. you're giving an example of uh, freedom of speech or freedom of expression or freedom of access information is not being adequately uh, followed. Just because they don't follow it doesn't mean the principle no, is no, not no. right. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that... The concept of freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of religion right. is doesn't exist in the real world in an absolute sense. Look, freedom in an absolute sense doesn't, doesn't exist, exist at right. all. So, but that doesn't mean that freedom freedom as a concept in degrees doesn't exist. It's like yes. temperature. All right, Look, fine. Temperature as yeah. an absolute doesn't exist. However, you can say 30 Perfect. degrees, 40 degrees, so, 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 50 so, so, so. degrees. The, 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 both societies have shown that we need some kind of law that if these people are traitors of our law or if these people do these things, espionage or sedition or tre treason, we can't tolerate that to the extent where we will kill them. Whether they do that judicially or extrajudicially, what I'm saying is, why don't you just be so open and honest about that sure, and, and, and give people a try? Right, be open. This is, these, are my, these are our limitations sure. as a state. Sure. If someone does X, we will punish them with Y. Sure. Don't, don't pretend that, okay, you're allowed to say whatever you want to say, but then take some guy out of his house at 3 o'clock in the morning and kill them it, with, with no trial. No country allows absolute freedom of speech. Uh, absolute freedom of speech a, a, as a defense point is a myth. Yes. Absolute freedom of speech doesn't exist. Absolute freedom of speech is allowed until this speech infringes, uh, or sorry, has the potential to cause physical harm. So calls to violence, releasing sensitive information on a cake. Yes. Releasing sensitive information in a case that will, you know, obstruct, uh, uh, obstruct uh, investigations, like uh, uh, leaking personal information that can lead to personal attacks. So yes, you're allowed to speak your mind. No, but it's not only just that. Point. No, no, it's not just that. Sorry, just to, just to cut you off. In America, there are. I'm not sure if you've ever seen this. There's something called the U.S. flag code. Have you seen it? Yes. Desecrating the American flag is a is a crime in most states. And this and will, I don't agree with that. Oh, look, you don't need to agree or disagree. That's a debate in America. And by the way, if I turn a flag upside down, look, you've got a big American flag, yeah? Yeah, and turn it upside down if I crime. If I turn it upside down in America, I mean, we're not talking about the medieval period here going so far away. If you turn a flag, a flag around or desecrate the flag or put it under your foot or something, you'll see on YouTube how people fight over that kind of thing. And I disagree And that. moreover, you'll see that the Supreme Court of Justice they, uh, they repeal the court, it's called, um, uh, I think it's uh, Thompson versus Texas or something. Johnson versus Texas, 1988, yeah? Okay. Basically this guy, he went out, he, he put the flag under his foot, he was ripping up the flag and whatever. Johnson. In Texas, there was a flag desecration law. If you did that, you go to prison. They put him in prison. Sure. He, I mean, uh, okay, wait, I'm know. saying, what I'm saying is, did they, look, constitutionally, and from a liberal perspective, did they have a right to do that? I say they did have a right to do that because they made it clear to him, if you do this to our flag, we will put you in prison. That's a law in the country. It's against freedom of expression and speech, yes. but it's not against the social contract and it's not against following law. It is against the social contract. No, it's not against. Well, let me explain. It's Please. not against the social contract. Look, I still disagree with that. I, I still, I still don't. I still think that the argument that saying these guys are doing something bad, we should do it too. I think that's the worst possible argument you can make in defense of something. It's not bad. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying it's. it's look, I'm saying this is what I'm saying. And I am saying no, that that's a straw man. Before you say, before you make that, I'm saying that they had a right to make that law. If the American people, through democracy or otherwise, decide that they don't want to see their flag being trampled upon. 
then that is something from a social contract and from a democratic perspective that should be honored and there's nothing wrong with that. Sure, but look, look, if we all vote, we should kill a person. Pardon? Like, just, like if we all vote to yes. kill an innocent person. No, not an innocent person. No, no, listen, if we all vote, because if this is democratic principle, if we all vote to kill an innocent person, should we go ahead with it? Now, here's the thing, that's your, your, your outlining a contradiction between democracy and liberalism. Yes, and, and, you're, you're, and that's also applying here. Because, no, no, the thing is, on because this, you're saying, look, let me people, explain, let me answer should, that. You should apply that because people have voted for it, and I'm saying, no, there are certain things that we should keep off bounds, regardless. Right. So, of, innocence, you know, how would you define that? Because here's the thing, if that person has gone against one of the rules of the sovereign, it wouldn't be called killing, it would be, it would, it would be called execution, right? Uh, it's potato, potato. No, it's not potato, potato, uh, my friend. Potato, let, potato. Me, let me explain why. A if, you, man, if a man is a dead, sorry, a dead man. when you are go to war, if you go to war against an uh, aggressive side, okay, if you, when the British went to war against the Germans, no one referred to what is happening to the Germans, or you know, as murder. They said that they see everyone has seen that as justified. What Hitler did. If you killed Hitler and if you came with a gun and you shot him, yeah. So the sure, point but is, that's still murder. It's just justified murder. You can it's call it murder. murder. No problem. But it's not an innocent person anymore, is it? So it's justified. Look, you can you, look. You can be. You can murder someone. Yeah. You and if you murder like not manslaughter, just murder. Yeah. And you have a good reason to murder this person. Like, I don't know. You attacked me or you threatened someone else and I murdered. Them. That is murder. I'm by definition guilty of murder. Whether there's a justification for this murder is. Here's what I'm saying. Look, me, I'm not a liberal, as you know. Fine. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a liberal. But what I'm saying is this. Here's my argument in the first place. My argument is, your argument as a libertarian which left leaning, no, I'm not well, well you're believing in that direction, or someone who's kind of believes in uh, that the state should have less rights to murder people, for example, yeah? That's your argument. I believe in, no, I, okay, maybe What's just your, to clarify. What's I your position? Believe, I do believe that the state has the right to mediate the, the, the social interaction between people. I do believe that. I do believe in, in democracy as to the extent that they should be able to uh, represent, elect representatives. Good, all, all well and done. However, I do not believe that the state should have the, 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 the right to take away life. Even in war? Huh? Even in war? No, that's not the government taking away life. That's still you. That's still you pulling the trigger. No, but, no, but I'm saying, in war, would, your, would your position apply in war or not? It still would apply. So not there's no war? You don't believe that? So no, it's no, not, no, I yeah. do believe in war. Yeah. All I'm saying is that even in a war, it's not a government killing a person. It's still No, you. but they're making the decision, isn't it? Well, who makes the decision is relevant. At the end of the day, the person pulling the trigger makes the decision. The chain of command, it's as long as they... decides. Yeah, yeah. It's it's state it is the state, look, is this... Provides the weapon. Right, it is, is the state that provides the weapon. So that's and a state decision. But if, the, if people don't fire a gun, there is no war. Are we clear with that? And I'm saying, yeah, yeah, look, if you, if, you, if, you, if you, like, I'm not saying the state is not involved. I'm not saying the state doesn't exist and war doesn't exist. Yeah. All I'm saying, so what's bottom your position? line, it comes down to the person. The person pulls the trigger. Okay. Right? So, and no, this is so what's your, your position?